Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Mary for today's Mass. A very special welcome to all visitors who are worshiping with us for the first time. If you have not yet obtained a white Mass bulletin, now would be a great time to do that. The bulletins contain all the music and liturgy for this Mass, as well as uh, announcements and upcoming events for our cathedral, so they are quite important. Uh, please make sure you have that. If you took a green Gregorian chant sheet, uh, you do not need that for this Mass. That was for the previous Mass. You can return those to the welcome desk now, um, and then we will uh, pick them up so we have enough for later. So please pick up a bulletin, return the green chant sheets if you took one by accident, and uh, we'll begin our Mass very shortly. Uh, any ministers for the sick and homebound who have picks, uh, now is a great time to bring those uh, to the sacristy if you do have those. Thank you.
Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Mary. A very special welcome to all visitors who are worshiping with us for the first time. And a very special welcome to the Freiburg Cathedral Girls Choir, directed by Martina von Lengerich, who will be um, uh, singing as part of our mass today, uh, all the way from Germany. So welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us today. Please be sure you've obtained a mass bulletin at this time. Uh, they are found at the welcome desk near the entrance of our cathedral. Uh, you may keep those when you leave today. They are an excellent resource for uh, upcoming events and they as, as well as containing all the music for this mass. If you took a green Gregorian chant sheet, you will not need this uh, for this mass. You can return those um, at this time or following today's service. Catholics believe that the Eucharist is the true body and blood of Jesus Christ and that our sharing in the Eucharist brings us closer into unity with our Lord's Church. We invite practicing Catholics who are prepared and properly disposed to receive communion to come forward at that time. Others present not receiving communion should join with us in prayer and in song. During our time for communion, if you are wearing a mask, we ask that you please pull your mask down below your chin uh, before you approach the host. And then to all who are receiving communion, please be sure to use the center aisle to come forward, but exit uh, back to your seats using any of the side aisles. Our second collection today will benefit the cathedral's building and maintenance projects. Uh, we thank you for your generosity towards this collection. And as a reminder, following mass today, uh, you may join us for hospitality hour in Parish Hall. You can find Parish Hall by taking the stairs located behind you uh, through the gift shop hallway and then uh, Parish Hall will be there. And we also want to uh, remind you now that the uh, uh, Freeburg uh, Cathedral Choir will be performing a concert today at 4 p.m. as well. Um, so if you like what you hear, please feel free to come back um, and support this group. Uh, please stand for the singing of our introit hymn. <laughs> Incline your ear, O Lord, and listen when I pray. Preserve your servant who confides in you all day. Have mercy, Lord, and hear my plight. My soul cries out by day. make my soul rejoice, I lift it up to you, for you are full of kindness and of mercy true. With tender heart, you treat the same who call on your immortal name. Give answer to my prayer and listen to my plight. When I am ill distressed, I call you day and night because I know with certainty that you will always answer. God the Father praise and glory to the Son and to the Holy Spirit equally be sung. The God who was and is to be 
brought us into eternity. Incline your ear, O Lord, and listen when I pray. Preserve your servant. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy 
on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shevna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Elikim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash, and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Elikim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Lord, Lord your, your love, love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, Lord your love is eternal. the work of your hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called you and said me, you built up strength within me. exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Your 
kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgment and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid. For from him and through him, and for him are all things. To him be glory forever, amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. And so I say to you, you are Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 
Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. If you were to ask a group of children who perhaps did not have previous catechetical training or instruction, who were the central characters, who are the most important figures in our gospel and in our readings, particularly our first reading, from the book of the prophet Isaiah today. The average kid, the average child would say, well, in the first reading, Eliakim. He's the most important person. It's all about him. He's clothed in a new robe. He's girded with a sash, which gives him a symbol of authority, not just a symbol, but the actual authority indicated by the fact that he has the key of the house of David given to him. When he opens, no one shall shut, and when he shuts, no one shall open. It's a pretty important role. And in the same way, any child might say, well, the central figure in the gospel today is Simon, Simon Peter. He answers the question correctly. And therefore, the Lord gives him a special name, Peter, meaning rock. And you are that rock, Peter. You are that rock upon which I shall build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Wow. That's a pretty important set of keys. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. To say that Peter and Eliakim are the central figures the central people to focus upon in our gospel and readings today would be a natural assumption. I used to think that when I was growing up as a kid. It's all about Peter. And then I began to grow and develop and study a little bit more about the Christian faith over the years. I read a little further in this very chapter, 16, of the Gospel of Matthew, and was startled to hear that right after this event, something else happens, something else is said. Jesus reveals to Peter and to his disciples that evil men in the future will arrest him, that he will suffer greatly from them, and that they will put him to death. And Peter says, no, no way is that going to happen. No. And the Lord says something to him that seems to undo, but it doesn't undo, what he had said just previously in the gospel. He says, get behind me, Satan. Those are his words, the words of the same Lord to the same man, Simon Peter. Get behind me, Satan, because you're an obstacle to me and my mission. Why? What happened? He says, because you're thinking the way human beings do and not as God does. 
And if you look more closely, after Peter's proper response to the question, who do you say that I am? The Lord makes it very clear that flesh and blood has not been the origin or source of Peter's correct answer. In other words, Peter wasn't just having a good day, a flash of insight, a proper theological response to the question of the Lord. No, flesh and blood did not accomplish that. Rather, this has been revealed to you by my heavenly Father. It's God's truth, divinely revealed truth. And outside of that divine revelation, Peter, left to himself, like everyone else, falls flat on his face and gets it wrong. He will later come to realize that and change and understand that through the mystery of the Passion and certainly on Pentecost Sunday. But here in this moment, it's a question of which Peter are we talking about? The Peter who makes this great profession of faith or the Peter that says you cannot accept this mystery of the cross. I will not allow that to happen to you. That Peter, the second Peter, would present us with a different religion than authentic Christianity. It would be Christianity without Christ. It would be Christ without the cross. Hmm. That sounds kind of nice, doesn't it? Christ without the cross, Christianity, we can make it up as we go along. Make religion useful, suited to our purposes, our own human agenda, our own ideolo ideological agenda of the moment. Religion is okay as far as, as long as it corresponds to the desires and whims, the demands, insatiable demands of our fallen human nature, then it's okay. Christ without the cross. The only problem is, is that we're far afield then of what the Father, the Heavenly Father has revealed, of His Son sent to us. Not that we might perish, but that we might have new life the joy, the gladness, the happiness of a new life for which we prayed in our collect, our opening prayer today, the life in abundance of the resurrection. But the same Gospel of Matthew makes clear that that life is inaccessible to us except in, in and through the cross. Because the cross proves something without which religion is a fraud. It proves that God is love and that love gives itself away in sacrifice and that the ultimate revelation, manifestation and reality of sacrificial love is the cross. And therefore it is only in and through the cross, in and through the tomb, the result of the Lord's death on the cross, that we find death conquered and replaced by a new life, life in abundance, life in the Spirit, for which we were created. And therefore, adhesion to, adherence to, divinely revealed truth is for our own happiness and our own benefit. And the role of Peter and the apostles is therefore not to self-manufacture an artificial version of the message of Christ, the meaning of his life and mission on earth, which is our first temptation. Let's make it more palatable. Let's accommodate our needs, our ego, our world from one generation to the next. Rewrite the whole script. We'll talk about Christ, but we'll just not mention the cross. We won't mention sacrificial love. It's a different version 
And as the Lord himself said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. At that point, you're an obstacle to me and to my mission. And therefore, authentic Christianity, not something counterfeit, the true gospel, not a false or artificial gospel, requires of us, as it required of Peter, that we learn the mystery and the message, the meaning of the cross, in order to know the message, the meaning, the mystery of love, of love. Who do you say I am? He has it right when he says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But he will need to discover Peter and all of us who choose to follow the real Christ. Yes, he is a king, but he is a crucified king. And in and through that cross, he gives us something that we could not find on our own, the mystery of love, a love that gives itself away, that pours itself out for you, for me, for us, so that we might be in a world worth living and might attain the kingdom of God already begun here and brought to fulfillment in the next. And then we discover along the way of that journey of love that God, not Eliakim or even Simon Peter, is the focus of our gospel and readings today, the point of it all. We hear it in our responsorial psalm, Lord, your love is eternal. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth because you have answered me and built up strength within me. And then our second reading, the letter of St. Paul to the Romans and to us today will come to life. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. I believe in Credo. Credo in Unum Deum. Et in Unum Dominum. Jesum Christum, Filium Dei Unigenitum. Deum de Deo, Lumen de Lumine, Deum Verum de Deo Vero. We propter nos homines, 
et propte nostrum salutem, descendite et celis. Crucifixus et siam pro nobis, su poncio Pilato, passus et sepultus est. Et ascendit in celum, sederat exteram patris. in spiritum sanctum dominum et vivificantem qui ex patre filio que procedit. <coughs> Etunam sanctam catholicam, et apostolicam ecclesiam. Et expecto resurrectionem mortuorum. hears the requests of all who call on him with faith, and trusting all of our cares to him, we bring our prayers before the Father. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Cordiglione, and the entire Church, that being attentive to and guided by the Holy Spirit, we all may be strengthened in unity of faith, of hope, and of charity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who hold public office and those who assist them, that they continuously promote the dignity of human life from conception to natural death, let us pray to the Lord. For peace among nations, the delivered from all turmoil all people may serve God in peace and freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. For the health of all the sick and for those in need of prayers, especially for Joe Edwards, Donna Rhodes, and Marianne Swab, that they be encouraged by Christ, the Son of the living God, conscious of his presence and love, may they be consoled by him who is the fountain of compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, especially for Segundo Zarate, Joe Inyert, and Maria Welch, that Christ the just and merciful judge may grant their souls a place of eternal rest, light, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of this Holy Mass, 
for the parishioners of St. Mary's Cathedral. Let us pray to the Lord. And so this Mass is offered for all of you, parishioners. We remember my friend Joe Enyart, who passed away recently. At this Mass, we continue to remember, as we did at last Mass, the repose of the soul of Maria Welch on this, her, her birthday anniversary. We entrust her to the merciful heart of the Lord and ask for the comfort and consolation of her friends and family who are here at this Mass. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Loving Father, help us to face the challenges of daily life with confidence in your love and protection. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son, and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim.
To you, their foremost merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you, firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Archbishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your people, especially those for whom we now pray. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, first of all, the most glorious and ever virgin, Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ. With blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, and your holy apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, he gave you thanks and praise. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fide. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the many gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offerings of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, so that all of us who, through participation at this altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, those who have died and have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, especially those for whom we now pray. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of light, refreshment, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso Est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritus Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia saecula saeculorum. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Ecce Agnus Dei. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Lord Jesus Christ, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. At this time, we invite all Catholics who are prepared and properly disposed to receive communion to come forward using the center aisle. All others present, should join with us in prayer and in song.
Our second collection this weekend is for the Cathedral Building and Maintenance. We thank you very much for your generosity towards this collection. Let us pray. <clears throat> Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Good afternoon. First Friday Adoration is September 1st from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Blessed Sacrament Shrine. The last hour from 4 p.m. is a special holy hour for vocations. Please join us in prayer. After Mass, please join us uh, in the Parish Hall for Hospitality Hour. Please be sure to take the bulletins home with you today as they are yours to keep, and be sure to also stop by the gift shop uh, on your way to Hospitality Hour. And lastly, a reminder that the uh, Freiburg Cathedral Girls' Choir will be performing a concert today uh, at 4 p.m. here in the cathedral. Um, I've been here for five years, and that was honestly one of the best choirs I've ever heard here. So bravo to you all, and thank you for uh, blessing our Mass today with that. I would second that, <laughs> and obviously, and invite you, uh, please uh, encourage you to attend the concert at four o'clock this afternoon. The Eucharist is meant to be, all creation is meant to be, the joining of heaven to earth. And God accomplishes that in a special way through beauty. And he gives some of his creation special gifts to facilitate that manifestation of his beauty as our creator. And so each and every single one of the Freiburg Cathedral Girls Choir has been gifted by God with such beauty that you have shared with us. And so may God bless you and reward you, those who lead you and prepare your studies and encourage you because you are very, very special. God bless you and reward you and thank you for your presence here in San Francisco at this cathedral today. Dominus Fobisco et cum spiritu tuo benedicat vos omnipotens Deus pater et filius et spiritus sanctus amen our mass is ended let us go in peace thanks be to god voices to praise my God with thousand times.
songs, my heart which in the Lord rejoices, would then proclaim in grateful songs to all wherever I might be what great things God has done for me. Keep silence now no more. Put forth the strength that God has granted. Your noblest work is to adore. O soul and body join to raise with heartfelt joy our makers. Creator, humbly I implore you to listen to my earthly song until that day when I adore you, when I have joined the angel throng and learned with choirs of heaven to sing. Peace. 